Hello! In the first two parts of this tutorial series, we made this game, which worked reasonably well and you have quite a lot of features. But there are a couple of things missing, and I'm gonna add them in this video. And it's two things in particular I want to work on. Number one is the collision mechanic, because in the game there are some collisions that don't work quite right just yet, and I'm gonna show you in a second just what I mean. And number two is that there is no sound, which does improve things quite a bit once you add it. And that's basically it. So let's go through them one at a time, and let's start with the collision. The main problem we have right now is that while the collision with the paddles from the left and the right works perfectly fine, if you hit either pedal from the top or the bottom, the collisions break down. And let me visualize this. So here we are back in the normal code, and check out the previous tutorials to get to all of this. And all I'm going to do for now is go to the line where we have created our player, and make the pedal quite a bit wider. So add 300 pixels, and move it 300 pixels to the left. If I run the code now, we have a really wide pedal, and if the ball hits it from the top or the bottom, we get something like this, where the ball just weirdly wobbles up and down. Same if we hit it from the top, it just doesn't really work and the game kind of breaks. And let me talk about what happens here. Basically the problem happens in this line, because all we do is check if any collision has occurred, and if that's the case, we multiply the direction of the ball by minus one, meaning we are reversing the direction. And this works if you hit a pedal from the left or the right. But if the ball hits the pedal from the top, this doesn't work anymore. And let me explain this in terms of frames. So on the first frame, the ball hits the player pedal on the top. And so the direction is being reversed. However, on the next frame, the ball is still colliding with the pedal. And as a consequence, the ball direction is being reversed again. And this continues to happen until the ball reaches the bottom of the player pedal which looks terrible and kind of breaks the game at some points. And fixing all of that needs a bit of logic, and I've made a dedicated video to just talk about collisions. And I am not going to talk too much about theory in this video, but check out the other video if you want all the details on collisions. But to fix all of this, let me first turn both of these if statements into separate parts. So we have two if statements that each check one of the paddles. So if collide rect of the player, then we also move the pedal. So both of these if statements are equivalent to the first if statement, except we have now put them on separate lines. And let me add the double colon. All right, here we go. The first thing I want to do is check the direction of the ball when it is colliding with the rectangle. So ball speed x, and for this one has to be positive, and for the opponent has to be negative. And let me add an end for both of them. That's really important. So now we have changed both of these, that it checks two conditions. The first one is that a collision has happened between the ball and the player. And the second one is that the direction of the ball has to be positive in case of the player and negative in case of the opponent, meaning that the ball is either moving to the right or to the left. And this should make some intuitive sense. That let's say on this line, if the ball is colliding with the player, then this can only really happen if the ball is moving to the right. If the ball is moving to the left, we don't really want to hit the player at all. So if I run this code now, we should already see some improvement. So if I run it now, we are seeing some improvement that the ball doesn't wiggle as much, but there's still some problems happening here, but we can work on them. And the first line I want to add is if the absolute value of ball.right minus player.left is smaller than 10. And if that's the case, we want to move the x direction of the ball. And I've explained this line in particular in the other video in quite a bit more detail. But basically all it does is we first check if a collision has occurred, and then we check what side the collision has occurred. And this line can only be true if the player paddle has been hit from the left. And this 10 is the tolerance for how much wiggle room we have. And if that's the case, we just want the thing we already had. So just reverse the direction of the ball. And if we implement the same thing for our opponent, we need to do it the exact other way. So we need ball.left and it has to hit the right of the pedal. And it has to be the opponent, not the player. So opponent.right. Yeah, it looks right. So if I run this code now, our ball should not be colliding with the top or the bottom at all. So if the ball hits from the top, it should just entirely ignore the pedal. And let's try this. And here we go. And it's completely ignored. So the ball goes right through our pedal. So that's a good start. But we want more than that. We want the ball to actually collide and bounce off the top or the bottom of our rectangle. And that we can also add quite easily. 
and we need an LF statement. And the same logic as with this line, just for the top and the bottom now. So we need ball dot bottom minus player dot top and also has to be smaller than 10. And if that's the case, we want to reverse the Y speed. But another problem here that we also want to check if ball speed Y is greater than 10. So if the ball is moving downwards and it's the player at the top. And it's kind of the same logic that we have used up here. And again, if that sounds confusing, check out the other video. It's much better explained in there. But all right, now we just need to copy this line again. And instead of ball.bottom, we change it to ball.top and player.bottom. And now y has to be smaller. Oh, and this isn't 10, this is zero. And with all of that one done, this should actually be working. So let's try it. And yep, here we go. We do have a collision from the ball and it's moving up and down. And the same thing again. And even if I move the paddle a little bit, it still is working. And yeah, there we go. With that one done, we just have to copy all of this to our opponent, that this works in the same way there. And ball.button and opponent.top. And the rest is fine. And this one should be opponent.bottom. And that's pretty much it. And now we have proper collisions for both of the paddles, which is quite an improvement. The only thing left to do is remove all of this that we have a normal size player paddle again. And if I run this now, this should look as normal. But now the difference is if either of the pedals has been hit from the top or the bottom, then, then the game doesn't break. So this is a nice improvement. And that brings us to the second point, to add sound to all of this. And adding sound in Pygame is actually fairly simple. There are two steps to it. On the first step, you have to import the sound. And in the second step, you have to play the sound in certain parts of your code. And in my case, I have two different sounds. One is called Pong, the other is called Score. The Score sound is being played whenever a score was being achieved. So if the ball has gone too far to the left or too far to the right. And the Pong sound is going to be played whenever the ball has collided with either the pedals or the top or the bottom of the screen. So let's implement all of that. And here I'm back in my code. And at the bottom where we initiated all of the other variables, I'm going to add another part and that's going to be Sound. And I have two files that I want to store on variables. The first one is pong sound. And to import sound into Pygame, we need pygame.mixer.sound. And make sure the S is capitalized. And then we need the name of the file, which in my case is pong.ogg. And then for the score sound, I copy this entire line, just change this to score. And the name of this one is also called score. And as always, make sure that both of these files are in the same directory as your code. Otherwise, you would have to give a more specific direction towards them. So now we have covered the first step, that we have imported our sound. Now we just need to play it in certain parts of our code. And this happens in our code all the way up here in ball animation. And the easiest one is this line here, when the ball either hits the top or the bottom of the screen. And all I want to do is pygame.mixer.sound. Play. So this is to play a sound, and now we just need to tell Python what sound to play, which in my case is Pong sound. And now we need this kind of thing in all of these different cases, and then we have our sounds. So I start with when the ball collects with the player, then when the ball collides with the opponent. So this is all the Pong sounds. Now I need when a score is being achieved, so this one will be score sound. And then the same for the other score. And that is pretty much it. If I play the sound now, this should be working. But there's a problem to that. And that is when we play this game right now, all of the sounds are being delayed by a couple of milliseconds, which does sound really, really strange. And let me explain why this happens. Basically, Pygame tries to account for really slow computers. So before it plays a sound, it tries to buffer the sound and only plays the sound once it's fully buffered which avoids broken sound on really slow computers, but also delays the sound by quite a bit. And we need to specifically turn this kind of thing off, so we need to reduce the buffer size. And that is really easily done. So here I'm back in my code on the line where we initiate Pygame. 
And what we need to do is to initiate a part of Pygame specifically. So we want to look at pygame.mixer and the line is called pre-init. So that when Pygame initiates all of it, it gets some specific information on how to initiate the mixer module. And there are a few arguments you don't really need to worry about. The first one is the frequency, and that was 44,100 by default. You just don't worry about this one. Then we have the size. This one is minus 16 by default. Also don't worry about this. Then we have the channels, and this one is two by default, and you can just leave it as it is. And now we come to the important part, and that's the buffer size. And by default, this one is 4096. And the high value causes the delay here. So we have to change it to a smaller value, let's say 512. And once we have that one, we can run the game and this should work perfectly fine. Okay, cool. But you do want to be aware of that this value should not be too small. And let's make it really small. Let's say we're going to make it 64. If we play this now, it is going to sound terrible. But that's basically it. If I return this to 512, then we have a proper working game. And yeah, hope that was helpful, and I'll see you around.